All righty, guys. So, I've been doing some thinking, particularly along the lines of this like new game system I'm working on that's basically just Blades in the Dark, uh, Runners in the Shadows, my, my Shadow Run, uh, like Powered by the Apocalypse hack. And I've also been thinking about that through that perspective of the like GNS theory. And uh, particularly the idea I've been thinking about is that like spectrum of like how much control over the world, how much control over like the fiction, uh, like the narrative setting, yada yada, do you give to your players and like the pros and cons of being closer or farther to one side or the other side. And I've been thinking about this particularly from like two examples that have been that I like I've recently come across. So for one, I've been watching the Dimension 20 uh Brennan Lee Mulligan uh Burroughs End or specifically Brennan Lee Mulligan as a player in their series Burroughs End. And I went back and watched one of his like interview adventuring academy videos where he said that as a player he very much so prefers the side of immersion and doing everything he can within the character to like have that character succeed and to not have to think about this from the perspective of like a narrative dramatic story but entirely from the perspective of this is my character and like what would my character do in this instance and then just uh like kind of expect that that sort of um like philosophy will like harbor a uh like an environment where you're gonna tell a good story and i do generally agree with that philosophy i do like that approach i think it's very appealing of like that idea of being a player and uh really trying to like get into that character and um and again trying to like from the perspective of like a game uh, trying to do as best in that game as you possibly can um so in my grand scale spectrum here i have over here like this is uh like the no control end the players as having zero control over the world um so here i would put like if you're just playing a video game uh because like in a video game if you're playing skyrim or something you can't just say like oh i did a lot of damage could i flavor this as what if i knock over a chandelier and crash it on the enemy's head uh, like you, you can't do anything like that. It's you are entirely bound to the laws of whatever the developer had put into that game. Okay, on the other end of the spectrum here, we've got like maximum one hundred percent control. You could you, like the boundary between player as someone that is a character and player as like the own as their own dm is entirely blurred there is no rules no game this i would put as like this would be like if you were just like straight up writing a screenplay you know there there's no rules no boundaries there you don't even you're not even bound by time you can start with the end you can write the end and then go back and write the beginning afterwards um so i do think like this is kind of defined by like maximum rules like maximum laws uh and this is entirely like defined by trying to be as dramatic and trying to tell a story as possible and not caring about like consistent uh like bound rules or anything um so i definitely think from that like brendan lee mulligan um uh, like immersion uh, like philosophy I, I would definitely put that on like this end of the spectrum and uh so the other thing that i was thinking about 
was, so I was looking into Powered by the Apocalypse, the Blades in the Dark, and the, uh, so like they have this idea of like the, one of the th- like moves you can take as a player is to ask a question. Sometimes it's called examine or like read the situation or something along those lines where effectively you ask a question and the DM like answers truthfully. So the question might be like, what's the most vulnerable thing here? What, what, who's the most vulnerable target? Or like, who's the biggest threat? Or who is in control in this situation? And then the DM tells you a truthful answer. And then the next time you act on that answer, you get a bonus. Uh, alternatively, there's also this thing in Powered by the Apocalypse that's like, or in Blades in the Dark specifically, the idea of the devil's bargain, where you as a player effectively propose or like offer like, okay, okay, like what if this thing goes wrong? Um, but I get a bonus on this roll. Uh, one of the examples they use for that is like, okay, so I'm talking to these guards and I want to convince them to walk away. Um, could I make a devil's bargain where like I get a bonus on this roll to convince them to walk away, but in the future they're going to remember me if I ever come across them again. And the game kind of suggests, um that like these proposals and offers of these different like abilities should not be restricted to things that the dm comes up with they say that like players should also throw offers out there and also throw like ideas for things along these lines that could happen which is definitely like an on this side of the spectrum type of idea and uh, so another example that I thought of, like particularly regarding the game that I'm working on right now, is, for example, if a player is doing some mission in like a hospital, in a building, they run across, like a, they come into a room with a huge security force, like multiple security guards, where they know they are outmanned, outmatched, and they know they cannot win in this situation, then they, like, use their read the sitch move, and they ask, like, what is the best way for me to get out of this situation? And it's possible that me as the DM, maybe I'm just, like, not, uh, you know, I'm just answering immediately. I didn't have any particularly good or interesting idea in mind, so I just say, like, well, you can go out the door you came in, which, not great, but I think that logically makes sense and is probably true, uh, but it's it's not really going to move the, like, it's not really going to move the game forward to a new, uh, to anything new going on. You're now just going to be in an adjacent room next to these security guards, so that's probably not an important particularly satisfying like answer to this situation so the like books kind of suggest like other players should throw out ideas if they have something interesting so if player a is the person in this situation they you might have like player b throw out the idea of like well what if there's like a laundry shoot or like a linen shoot that like they use to throw their dirty sheets or whatever into what if there's something like that that he can jump into to get away from them and then i as the dm would probably like answer that to that like oh yeah that, that's a great idea like that that's actually the best way of you getting out of this room is that there is a laundry chute that you could actually jump into um which is definitely not like a particularly at least the way that like the D&D books are written and the, the way that they sort of differentiate the DM and the players, um, it, they definitely don't like lead you to believe that that's sort of how the game should work in D&D. There's like a pretty strict, like there's the DM and he is or she is the person that is controlling the world and, uh, you know, is both the 
arbitrator of rules and the the like world itself and then you have like the players who are simply just the just the character and just have control over that uh but that even said there is like wiggle room for that in D because there is stuff like the well can i flavor my crit as me doing this that or the other which i think people are generally a fan of so I do think, like, in this spectrum, if I was going to, like, pop down D&D in a place, I'd probably put, like, a- around here. It is on the rules-heavy side of games. It is not, like, the most rules-intense RPG, but it's certainly on that end of the spectrum. Um, and I think, like, on this side, I'd probably put, like, solo or co-op DM. Any game where everyone is, like, equal parts both uh like a player and a dm uh like iron sworn or i think that's the name of the game stuff like that where you're not full straight up like writing a screenplay because you're not jumping around in time you're still bound by like linear time progression but you've got like complete and total control over how anything is interpreted uh, at any given time um And then I think, like, closer to the middle is where I would put stuff like Powered by the Apocalypse and these, like, rules light games. Um, Now, I do think, like, when it comes to D&D, I find people like the idea of, like, you know, rule of cool or the uh, Bria Iyengar, the... What you don't see, which is this idea, what you don't see, um, this idea of like, as a DM, you know, when the players make a perception check and they fail, instead of giving that little twee like, uh, you don't see anything, it could be anything, you would instead answer with like, well, what you don't see is the monster stalking you in the woods and lurking in the shadows and skulking around trees and sneaking up on you. Stuff like that, which is something that the players are, or the characters should have zero idea of, but you are giving, like, the players more information. So I I think, like, rule of cool and, like, the what you don't see is kind of like taking D&D and, like, pushing it towards this end of the spectrum the closer to the giving players more of that role of the like dm uh like giving them more information than just what their characters would know and generally i find that people love like rule of cool and what you don't see like even Brennan Lee Mulligan, who ostensibly is all about the immersion um, and all about being bound by what his character can do and what his character can see, he like loves this stuff that uh, gives you like more uh, of like a look into the like narrative story side. Um, so. Yeah, so, like, my hypothesis is basically, like, people are a big fan of uh, trying to, like, like, I think ideally people are having the most fun with the story when you can sort of push your game as close to this side as you can without it becoming a without it slipping out of that realm where it is no longer a game. Like, you still need to have the threat of failure there, and you still need to have those, like, failure states so that success is actually satisfying because, you know, you you could have lost, so winning actually means something. Whereas once you get too close to the just, like, writing a story side... Like, at that point, there's no game element at all. There's no, like, hype moment when the heroes finally win the day because you knew at 
any time. You could just make the heroes win. Um, which, like, not to say that there's not other positive good things about creating a, some sort of story or using this as your, like, form of media or whatever, but just for what we're shooting for and, like, the like the feeling we're trying to capture with a role-playing game, you know, it's definitely easy to go too far on this side. Uh, so I do think, like, additionally, like, on these ends, there's kind of, like, a like a horseshoe theory like once you get far enough on the side of either end of the spectrum you achieve like a level of like cohesiveness um so like if you are trying to if, if you've got like a theme or like a message that it's you you need to have a um you need to have, like, a lot of control over, like, both the beginning and the end. Um, like, if you were trying to pull some sort of spec ops, the line, uh, you, the whole, like, you're, uh, you are willingly engaging in this violence and by playing this game and by participating in this activity you are the one who's like bringing harm and injury and malice towards all these people where you could just choose to not engage and then um but like spec ops the line you can't really do that if that's D and D, and if every single combat the players could just choose to say like no 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 let's just not fight these enemies like let's just talk to them and like let's talk our way out of this and let's never hurt a single person in this entire game because then you can't get to the end of the game and then have this whole thing where you're like you're the real monster by playing this game and having fun by killing people and choosing to do this and um so yeah like the closer you get to like the middle it's a lot harder to like have this message that you're trying to uh, have with your game but there definitely is like a level of like uncert ooh, uncertainty um but also like this element of like freedom of like players really being able to choose the meaning like they, if, if they want to try to tell a story with a particular meaning it is farther in the in the hands of the players rather than in the hands of the the world creator or anything um so yeah i do think you know the like i don't know i guess my 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 hypothesis my idea regarding this stuff is that like with players generally always liking stuff like the rule of cool and liking the what you don't see and things that improve or things that give players not characters uh, more of a look and more of an ability to control the world and the narrative and the fiction as opposed to things that just interact with the rules. People like that. So I find like you'll want to try to push this as close to the left as possible uh, while it's still being a game. At least that's going to be the approach I'm going to try at least testing out with this newest game and seeing how it works uh, and that's uh yeah I, I don't think this is necessarily any like groundbreaking new discovery or anything I, I think like this is all pretty straightforward like I, I i like i think this uh you know it's nothing new or anything it's just something that i've been thinking about and wanting to get into uh words and just talk it through so yep yeah, that's about it that's all i had all right i will see you go all right i will see you later